Welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're working on something a little bit different. Uh, usually it's cars and trucks and motorcycles and what have you. Uh, today, as you can see, or maybe you can't see behind me, uh, we're working on Kayla and I's 1953 Massey Ferguson TO35. Um, I love this tractor. We, this was like the first thing that we bought when we knew we were gonna get ourselves a little bit of property and move out here. Um, we've since accumulated a few more tractors, which I'm sure you've seen in the background maybe of other videos, but um, this, was, this was the one that we first bought and it was an absolute workhorse for us when we first moved out here, uh, trying to clean up the property. Um, unfortunately, probably about a year ago now, I uh, broke it. Um, while I was brush hogging one day, I don't really know if I did something that I shouldn't have or if it just gave up because it's 70 years old or whatever, but all of a sudden I didn't have a clutch. So I need to put a clutch in it. Um, I think probably, that was probably about a year ago and it's kind of sad. Again, we have a few other tractors that kind of picked up the slack um, and we just accumulated more. There are like four tractors here right now. But anyway, um, I think about five or six months ago, sometime this past summer, I kind of started looking into this because I'd heard, I know like the problem was that I didn't really have a clutch. Like a clutch would not disengage from the engine and then like if you push the pedal down, you would just keep going. And now I know that, you know, some guys have had luck uh, with having stuck clutches. So, you know, sometimes like mice get into the into the bell housing and, and you know, you get a little corrosion and the, the pressure plate kind of sticks to the flywheel or whatever the case may be. And uh, I know guys have had, had uh, success just kind of being rough with these things, kind of dumping the clutch or chaining it to a tree and, and trying to force the clutch to break loose. Um, I'm probably showing the, the videos, or maybe I will right after this, uh, this little spiel here of, you know, kind of diving into this maybe six months ago, whenever it was, back when the weather was warm. And uh, I think I've pretty well figured out what the problem is. And uh, I'm sure you'll see it. But basically there are, there are some bolts that kind of hold the, the clutch packs, you know, the clutch, the pressure plate to the clutch, and if I'm using the wrong word, sorry, but uh, it holds the clutch together, basically, and one of those bolts, the head's sheared off, so that when you press on the, like, when you press the clutch pedal, and it pushes on the throttle bearing, and it pushes on the fingers that should release, disengage the clutch, only two of the fingers do anything. The third one has a, the bolt that holds it on is sheared off. So I'm pretty sure that's the problem, and uh, unfortunately, I think I'm gonna have to split the tractor, and um, I don't know what I'll I'll get into. You know, I I have new hydraulic lines for this thing. I guess I could go ahead and throw on. I I've recently done you know this past year, you know, fluid changes and filters and, and spark plugs and whatnot. It, it runs awesome. It just needs a clutch. And while I'm in there, I might pretty some things up. But uh, yeah, that's enough rambling. Hopefully you're excited. I'm gonna do my best to actually document this. There are a lot of videos out there where people like replacing the clutch, but it's very much so the like, I'm gonna do this, and then they set the camera down and they pick it back up and the tractor looks completely different. They're like, I did this, this, and this. I'm gonna do my best to show you everything I do. Worst case scenario, you find out exactly what not to do, but hopefully by the end of this, my tractor's fixed and we'll have a decent video documentation of how I uh, went about fixing it. So, thank you guys, and uh, let's get to it. So the old TO35, the clutch has been acting up. Like I can't seem to get it to fully disengage. Like when I press it in, like it'll stop moving, but not, well, kind of, but not enough to get it into gear. Like you have to turn the tractor off to get it into gear. Um, and then it's really difficult to change gears. I adjusted the pedal as much as I could 
So there's that bolt right there. You can loosen and you can adjust this arm on this pivot right there. And I don't remember the spec. It's like, I don't know, like a quarter of an inch to like three eighths or something. I don't know, but that's very little slop. I feel like that seems good to me. It still wasn't working very well. So I was like, oh dang, you know, what's the problem? So there's an inspection cover under here and I pulled the, the cover off and this fell out. And I'm like, what the heck is that? It kind of looks like a mouse nest or something. I don't really know. But now I'm wondering if it could just be something that simple, which would be really cool. If just like a mouse got in here, Let's see if I can show you. I don't know if I'll be able to. I don't know if maybe just like a mouse got in here and made a so much of a nest that like you can see there's more up there. Actually, I have no idea if you can see. Hopefully you can see. Oh man, I don't know. Can you guys see? I don't know, there's more stuff up in there. So I'm gonna try to clean as much of that out as I can. I don't know. Man, I have no idea if you guys can see or not. I hope you can. But I don't know, basically there's a bunch of junk up in there that I'm gonna try to clean out as best I can. Now what? <laughs> Guys, what do I do? Oh no. How many more are up there? Oh, he's tiny. I don't want to kill him. Maybe I can put his house back together and put him somewhere safe. I don't want to hurt you, but you can't stay here. All right, let's gather up the mouse house. There's more in there. Let's go put it somewhere safe. I'll put this guy back in there. That seems like a good mouse house. Better than the bell housing of my tractor. All right. Mouse house. He hasn't even moved. I don't think this guy can even see. He's tiny, tiny. Oh yeah, his eyes aren't even open. Well, I wonder if that means that the mouse house has happened since I've had an issue with the tractor and it's just been kind of sitting and not the actual problem with the tractor to begin with. There you go, buddy. Safe and sound. And any more of your siblings I pull out, I'll stick with you. Hopefully mom and dad aren't up in there and are gonna bite me as I keep sticking my hand up in there. But I guess we will find out. So after cleaning a little bit more out of the bell housing, I fired the tractor up and uh, you'll see here, Mama Mouse just appears, startles me, startles herself, and then uh, eventually appears to kind of take off back toward the rear of the tractor and hopefully off into the tree line to find her relocated babies.
Now I should mention at this point, I'm still clinging to the hope that there's nothing actually mechanically wrong with the tractor. I'm hopeful, naively, but hopeful that uh, I'm gonna be able to just clean this thing out and she's just gonna kinda fix herself. But uh, after firing it up, you saw me pump the clutch a few times and nothing's really happening. So unfortunately, the tractor has not yet just magically fixed itself. So I decided, well, I'd better lay back under there and take another peek. All right, well, on the plus side, Pretty sure I found the problem. On the minus side, it's kind of a big problem. So, after fishing around, messing with it for a while longer, I had my arm pretty much up inside the bell housing there. And I, uh, <laughs> and then I found this. So, that's not good. That was just laying in the bottom of the bell housing. And uh, I think I see exactly what it is. I don't know if I'll be able to make you guys see it, but I will try. Right, right there. This thing, I'm touching with the light. That's like one of the fingers that the, oh man, that the uh, throw out bearing, which is that guy that I'm shining the light at, presses up against. Um, can you see a finger somewhere? Oh yes, right there, right there. that the brightest part of the light is on right now. So you can see that as the throw out bearing, this thing presses this way, presses, pushes in on that finger, and that finger pivots and uh, disengages the clutch. Well, the head of that, that bolt head that I just showed you that was laying in the bottom of the bell housing should be on this side of the back of that finger connected to well the rest of the bolt is on the inside of that spring that you can see so with that bolt head being broken this finger doesn't really do anything when the throttle bearing presses on it and I'm gonna press the clutch with my hand and you will see that does not do anything because there's no bolt head on the back of that. Oh, that dropped the light. That oh, is what it's supposed to look like. You see that this thing right there? That the bright part is on. That's the head of the bolt. That came off. There's the rest of the bolt in the middle of that spring. So that... Man, I wish I could get the light to just stay there. Can I put the light in here? Wait, what if I do this? Is that any better? Yeah, that's better. Okay, so now, hopefully you can see when I push the clutch with my hand. You can see that moves. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah, you can see that. So yeah, there are only three fingers and one of them is not doing anything. So therefore, we only have tiny little bit of clutch. <sighs> Mystery solved. Unfortunately, I think that is going to require me to split the tractor. So, yay, we know what's wrong. Boo. That's a lot of work. Well, now that we're fairly confident that we've identified the problem, I say we just go ahead and grab a few before shots so we know what she looks like before we dive in. 
and then go ahead and dive in, start tearing this old girl down. Let's get to work. Step one is start figuring out what all needs to come off so that I can separate the tractor. Pretty sure that uh, from here forward is engine and then this is the bell housing. So presumably the clutch has got to be right behind here. So anything that's connected to this side and this side should probably take off. I also have this little like plow frame thing to contend with, which looks like this is welded. It goes to like a, a pin back here. That looks difficult to handle. So I might try to just take it off here so that I should be able to slide that. Should be able to slide this half forward and leave this behind with this half. At least that's what I'm thinking as of now. But uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna start with the hood and then uh, maybe these steering arms and then maybe the like air intake and then potentially hydraulic lines and then just keep figuring out what all looks like it needs to come off and then just try to get it out of the way. That's the plan. I will show you what I end up doing. Wish me luck, because I don't know what I'm doing at all. <laughs> all right, looks like an 11 sixteenths on each side. At the base of the hood, let's try to get that off. Figure out what rig needs to be here. Let's tighten. If I were smart, I would have sprayed these all with like PB blaster yesterday or something, but I didn't. So you are witnessing stupidity at its finest. Gonna do it again on the other side. That's a lot easier. That looks pretty good too. piece certainly is connected to the front and the back so something needs to happen there I'm gonna try it here looks like this doodad will come off so let's try these two nuts I did go ahead and spray all the nuts I think I might need to try to take off went ahead and sprayed down with some PB so, uh, yeah See what happens. So I know I might catch flack in the comments for using an extension on an impact and a silver one at that and silver sockets, but 
I uh, don't have any impact uh, standard size sockets and I don't have any impact extensions, but I've got the gun set to stun, not kill. And uh, you know, if I break it, that'll be a lesson learned. But these are also 11 sixteenths. Let's see how we do. Oh yeah, no problem. Oh. Power tools is the way to go. Why'd I even? I'm just gonna throw my ratchets away. That's neat. Let's go do the other side. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to interject and kind of explain that duct tape covered piece of pallet wood that I slipped under the gas tank there. The duct tape covered pallet wood is just what happened to be sitting in the shop at the time. The reason that I slid the piece of pallet wood under there is because the gas tank was connected to the battery tray. And the battery tray stays with the back half of the tractor, but the gas tank needs to go with the front half of the tractor. So I undid the two bolts connecting the battery tray to the gas tank slip the piece of pallet wood under there to kind of keep them separated in hopes that I could easily just split the two without having to mess really with any of the fuel lines. Okay, so, okay, so, it's uh, a new day. And uh, I think we left off, we had just popped this arm off and I realized that because I have the front hydraulics, oh, almost fell, this is in my way. So, let's see if I can pop that bolt off, get this bracket out of the way, then I can swing the steering arm back out of the way like we did on the other side. Um, I sprayed these bolts, these exhaust bolts with PB Blaster last night. It's looking like there's probably about a 0% chance of those coming out of there, so I don't know what we're gonna do about that yet. Very likely, reciprocating saw just bzz, to be honest with you that that might happen maybe we'll flip the the manifold over go straight up put a tractor flap on it that's always i've always liked those thought they're pretty neat but uh yeah i don't know let's uh dive back into this bing bang boom bob's your uncle This is toward tractor. Alright. Front row tickets to me. Snapping these bolts off. I don't know what size they're supposed to be, but. Nine, I can't get a 9 16 on there and 5 8 feels really sloppy. But a 15 millimeter fits on there real nice. Well, that wasn't that fun. Um, the first one 
I did came off pretty nicely and uh, gave me a lot of hope. But the other two, this one and then there's one back here, um, they didn't play as nice. I don't know what size they're supposed to be. Um, a 15 millimeter ended up getting two of them for me and then the third one I had to just pound a 14 millimeter onto. They, uh, well obviously, be needing replaced and chewed them up pretty good. I don't know if they were stripped when I started or I definitely didn't do them any favors. First one looks good. Anyway, um, to get to this back one, uh, someone, it, I think someone has replaced this fuel line. Um, it looks in really good shape. Looks like brand new, except for the nicks where I hit it. But, uh, Anyway, it was like right in my way to get to this one. So I just had to take this fitting loose and just kind of pop it off to the side. I just put a catch pan underneath it, it barely drained anything. Uh, you can turn your pet cock off at your fuel bowl right there. But um, yeah, the exhaust is off. It's over there with the hood. And uh, I think next, I'm either going to, actually I might go ahead and do both. I might label with like a Sharpie, just number these on the valve body here. And then on the other end of wherever they go, just put a corresponding number so that I know where to put them back. Um, probably gonna replace them. I think I have some floating around somewhere. But yeah, I just wanna get those out of the way and then I might do kind of the same thing for wiring. And just kinda start marking this stuff and getting it out of the way. I might replace some or all of the wiring, some amount of the wiring, uh, just kind of while I'm at it and it's apart. Some of it looks in kind of sad condition. I don't know, I don't know how deep into it I'll get, but yeah, probably throw you guys up on a time lapse because your tractor might be different, but either way, like I promised, I'll bring you back in and show you exactly what I did and you can, you can watch me do it, so. Wish me luck. It's another new day. Uh, she's right where we left her. Managed not to make a mess. Just pulling that off somehow. Pretty stoked about it. Just need to clean up a little bit of leakage there, but didn't drip on the floor that I can see. Looks like this cylinder is finished draining. It looks like we caught everything in the drip pan. Pretty stoked about that. I think what I'm gonna try to do next, now that the hydraulic lines are out of the way, is just see about getting this whole plow frame thing off of here.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that circus act. Um, that would have been a lot easier with another set of hands, but uh, totally doable um, by yourself. And again, if you're watching along for educational purposes, then I apologize because I don't know what I'm doing. But also your tractor may not have this plow. I'm calling it a plow frame. There's a blade that bolts onto this thing. I just use it for pushing snow and dirt around, so I'm calling it a plow. It's not actually a plow. But anyway, you may not have to deal with that. But uh, yeah, would have been easier with another person, but luckily not too ridiculously heavy. And uh, the cherry picker and floor jack uh, came in clutch. Now I guess I can show you what I meant. This is pretty common, I think. I mean, I've done this, I guess, where you just tack weld the nut to the bolt. It's just to make sure that the nut can't back off. And at first I was like, oh, why'd they do that? But now I totally understand. Yeah, so that can't come off of there and you can still remove the rest of the frame, as you can see, with that little bracket staying on there. So that actually worked out pretty nice. I've got the hardware and such in my pile. This was the pin that I was talking about in the back. It was literally just a pin and it had a cotter pin and it slipped down from the top like that and the cotter pin was in the top of it. There's a the cotter pin. I mean, I'll replace this stuff, this, this kind of stuff, but just wanted to show you that. And uh, I guess I'll show you where that went. It just went right here. Anyway, I think next, probably gonna roll this old girl back forward a little bit. And then uh, I think we're, we're getting close. There's not a whole lot of things left to disconnect. I'll probably label some wires and get them out of the way. And then I guess throttle and choke linkage. Uh, that'll have to get out of the way. And then I think um, then I think it's time to undo the bell housing bolts and find, uh, find out how many things I forgot about. So, keep plugging along. Please continue to wish me luck. I need it. <laughs> so the throttle and the choke are both obviously actuated from the dashboard, which means that you're going to have to separate the linkages in some manner in order to split the tractor. The choke is pretty easy. It's just a hooked rod that goes through a linkage on the carburetor with a cotter pin that you can see me pulling out now. The throttle, there are a few additional linkages and you could probably split it various different ways. But what I ended up doing was loosening these two nuts on this U-bolt that clamp down on what I'm gonna call the throttle shaft. And that allows you to slip the throttle shaft out of the U-bolt and thus separating each half of the tractor. Now, if you decide to go this route, I would suggest that you mark or indicate somehow where that U-bolt is clamped down onto that throttle shaft or rod or whatever you want to call it. Otherwise you might have some fiddling around to do to ensure you get your full throttle actuation when you put it back together. Ask me how I know. All right, I think we're close. Um, one thing I guess maybe you didn't see was on the other side of the tractor, I pulled off the uh, oil bath air cleaner doodad. And then uh, I also just went ahead and pulled off 
the whole throttle rod thing. Um, I pulled off the air filter or the, the oil bath air filter doodad thing. It just was right here. Just these two bolts. Um, I just did that so that I could take it out of this hole so I could see the back of the gauges. Let me grab a flashlight. Because I noticed um, I guess for context Pretty much none of the gauges work, so they need replaced. There, that way you guys can see. So I think that, where it's really bright, is like oil pressure, and then that one is coolant temp, and neither of those work. They haven't since I've owned the tractor. Um, yeah. Water temperature and oil pressure. So they need replaced. Um, Oil pressure, looks like I can just undo right here at this fitting. Um, so that's nice, so I'll do that. And then water temperature is like one of these, I don't, I don't know if this is common or not, but it's like, it's not like electric. It's got this, I really, I don't even know what to call these and I don't really even know how they work. I think some type of capillary action or or something. The sensor goes up in there and then this goes all the way back to the gauge. Like I said, it doesn't work. I don't have the replacement yet. So I don't really want to pull that out of there and then just drain all the coolant. So what I think I'm going to do is just cut it. Just like snip it right here so I can get the things apart. Hopefully it doesn't leak. Um, like I said, I don't really know how they work, so if it does leak, then I'll deal with it, but I, if I pull it out of there, I'm almost certain that I'll just make a huge mess, especially not having anything to put back in it. Uh, but yeah, so you saw me label stuff, and just, you know, so that I know where they go, so it's like coil negative, this is like the starter lug, just got it out of the way. And uh, I think we're down to just the bell housing bolts. I think there are like 12 or something bolts around the bell housing. I might take the starter off because I don't know. Like I mentioned, I, I don't know how deep into this I'm going to get. If I'm going to paint stuff or what, but it looks like it's pretty easy. Just two bolts maybe. So I might pop that off just to have it out of the way. I might pop the coil off just to have it out of the way. And then, uh, yeah. And it's uh, bell housing bolts. It looks like there's one like hiding up under there too. Can you see that? Oh, if I can get the microphone out of the way. Of course, I put the flashlight away and then I need it. Yeah, there's one hiding in there. So if you're trying to follow along at home, again, there are probably better videos about this, but this is what I'm encountering. Don't forget about that one. And it also looks like the uh, battery mount thingy needs to be unbolted too. That guy. There's probably one on the other side too. But anyway, yeah. I guess I'll set up a time lapse of me backing those bolts off and uh, maybe go ahead and pull the starter and whatnot to have it out of the way. Keep plugging along. So what you may not have been able to see in that time lapse was that as I took the starter off, the ear that mounts the starter to the bell housing completely broken off. So that's inconvenient. And once I finally did get the starter out, 
You remember that mouse that I found in the cell housing way back in the beginning of the video? You know, the really tiny one? Yeah, well, I think there might have been two. And apparently I didn't find this one. So definitely let me know down in the comments below if you guys find any hidden gems inside your tractor as you open her up. All right. So there's my sweet uh, custom inspection cover there. It's a nice access panel. Um, I threw the bucket or the catch drip pan back under there because I think uh, I think the rear main might be leaking. There's quite a bit of oil on those bottom bolts. I've just got two of them. There's one. And then one on the other side still in there just to keep things safe for me until I'm ready to actually try to pull it apart. Here's what I'm working with over here. I almost forgot. Pivotal right here. Mouse. Make sure we don't forget that. But uh, yeah, as you can see, these bottom bolts, pretty oily. So, uh, the X's are the, there are holes, but there are no bolts. Uh, someone's been in here before. That doesn't look super factory to me. Um, but you know, it's like a 70 year old tractor, so. I guess you'd expect that. And uh, yeah, I guess, oh, I should put those there. Boop, boop. And there's that hog of a starter. That bad boy is heavy. But uh, yeah, anyway, next I think I'm gonna try to cram some two by fours maybe like in between the I'm calling this a leaf spring I don't know if that's really what it is but it doesn't look like one but it looks like it's suspension it doesn't look like a leaf spring I'm used to seeing like on old cars or trucks but anyway I'm gonna try to cram something like a two by four in between here I'm thinking that will help it not like want to do this on me like tip back and forth I don't know that that's a great idea, and I don't know that that will even do what I'm hoping it'll do, but that's kind of what I'm thinking. I just don't want to like be pulling this thing forward and it want to like, you know what I mean? Like fall over. That would be no bueno. But yeah, I think we're pretty much free. Got some scrap two by four. Gonna pound that in there, maybe think about it again, see if that actually makes sense. And then take out the last two bell housing bolts that are holding me in. And maybe wait to get a second set of hands. I don't know, see how frisky I'm feeling. It is already dark. I could really go for some din din right about now. But uh, we'll see. I'm also really thinking that once this is apart, Maybe I can use the bolts to align that piece back in there and then just freaking turn the old Vulcan all the way up and see if it'll melt those bad boys back together. But uh, yeah, that's where we're at. And I'm, uh, like I said, really not sure where I'm going next. So either way, it's going to be instantaneous for you guys, but... I'll either see you when it's daytime or uh, you'll see me right now. Keep wishing me luck. It's getting interesting. <laughs>
beautiful day. Um, sorry the heater's on. Got to try to take the chill off in here a little bit. Hopefully you can hear me. But uh, I've got the help of, I've enlisted the help of the lovely wife. And uh, I think I showed you, I've got this thing blocked up, pretty much ready to go. And uh, yeah, now we're just going to have Kayla kind of try to guide stuff. And I think it's time to cut this little um, water temperature sensor like I told you about before. Just to free it up and hopefully not leak too much. I'm just going to snip this because it's going to get replaced. And then see if we can uh, split this old girl. Wish us luck, I've never done this before. Wow, so this video has really gotten away from me. I never intended for this to be a two-parter, but I think I'm gonna have to split this into two different videos. I mean, we're almost 50 minutes into this thing and I'm just now getting the tractor apart. I feel like this is a reasonable place to go ahead and break the video. Maybe not everyone watching this uh, needs to replace their clutch or replace the rear main seal or any of the other fun things you'll see me do in the next one. You know, maybe you're splitting your tractor for a different reason, so rather than watch an hour and a half long video, of only half of which is useful to you, hopefully uh, this format works out better. Nevertheless, if you're still watching this, I can't thank you enough. I really hope that you enjoyed this on some level, whether it was informational or just entertaining to watch me struggle. Whatever the case, I certainly thank you. I appreciate your time, and I hope to see you in the next one.